Hi, good morning everyone. Let's get started with the next topic for this training session which is on background jobs in SAP. So we'll cover, cover about few things. First thing is why do you need background processing? What is a job? What can be performed in the background? What start criteria are there? How are jobs scheduled and monitored? What status can a job have? So these are couple of things we'll be covering in this particular topic. So first thing is why background jobs are required in SAP. Basically what happens is using a system parameter called rdisp slash max work process runtime you can control for how long a dialogue process can run so that the end users program can run in the foreground for that much time. For longer running programs you don't want them to be run in the foreground because it takes hours and hours. So for that purpose there are background jobs. Reports that are to run on a regular basis and long running programs they can be scheduled in SAP system as jobs. Administrator schedules jobs and monitors the system's background processing to ensure that it is running correctly. Okay, so basically here in this figure you can see that the background jobs is like an elephant where it can do heavy lifting. But dialogue processes are like uh, horses, they do fast processing, faster processing, faster processing times is there for that. Okay, second thing is we can schedule the background jobs on a periodic or regular intervals as well. So next thing that comes to mind, what is a job? A job is processed by one background job process and a job consists of a step in a job can be an ABAP program. Basically job contains one or many steps. A single step can be a ABAP program possibly with a variant, an external command or an external program. Okay, in addition to the planned start time you can differentiate between six other job priorities that is class A job with target server group, class A job without target server group, class B job with target server group. Same thing goes on for class B and C jobs as well. Okay, so as we saw, job is consisting of multiple steps and each step could be a ABAP program, could be an external command, could be an external program and there are three types of jobs. Okay, so same thing we are seeing it here, that is what we can execute in these steps. Okay, so every ABAP program can be scheduled as a step of a job. If the ABAP program has one or more selection screens, you must create the input required there in advance in the form of a variant. A variant makes it possible to run an ABAP program in the background, although the program requires input. The values stored in the variant are then used during the execution of the program. If an ABAP program has a screen output as a result, this is directed to a spool list. Okay. An external command is like a call of predefined script, a command or a program at operating system level. With external commands, you can mask operating system calls and store them in SAP system under a name. You can also use the SAP authorization concepts to protect the execution of an external command. This enables you to determine which users are allowed to execute which external command. And external program is like you want to run any operating system command. Okay, next thing is about the start criteria for the job. Basically, a job can be triggered at a particular time. We call them as a time dependent job. When a particular event occurs, we call them an event dependent jobs. Okay, here we are seeing how to actually create a job or schedule a job in SAP. So the transaction is SM36. 
basically we can do a general job description define couple of steps define the start criteria and that's it we can use a job wizard as well okay so that is about the scheduling and from the monitoring perspective there is a transaction called sm37 we'll log into both of them and see how it works so let's get connected before that i just want to cover this theory part okay so this is about the job scheduling you can see that in this particular interface we can find out which job is running at what time what is the status of a job how many jobs are running and all that stuff okay so next thing is about the different status of a job here you can see when you schedule a job it goes into scheduled status when it is released it goes into release status when it is ready to run it is ready status okay that is the start condition of a release job has been fulfilled active the job is currently being executed and cannot be deleted or changed if an active job doesn't seems to be running correctly you can terminate it in a background work process in a debugging mode analyze it and then release it again or terminate it so that is about the different status of a job okay then about the time based scheduling of jobs background jobs can be configured on every instance of the sap system using the parameter called rdisp slash wp underscore no underscore bdc so immediately stop start basically once or periodically you can schedule them to run okay a day relative to the start or end day of the month okay then is about the standard jobs there are some jobs in sap which is basically for clean up for maintenance work they are called the standard jobs okay then event based jobs event based job it's like they occur after an event after a predecessor job after if an operating mode is switched so basically we call them as event based jobs okay next thing is how do we create an event here you can see that we can create a definition of an event using ccms that is central monitoring system then it could be a user based event it could be a system event okay triggering of event we can have an it can happen in these three ways and at the os level basically this is the command which can be used that is sap evt event equal to the name of the event and name equal to the seed of the system and we give the message of a host name uh, as well okay so that is about the theory part of background job so let's see what we have learned so far in this particular topic so first thing that we saw is about the creation of jobs in sap which is sm36 okay we define the name of the job okay this is the name of the job okay class of the job there are different classes of the job basically here you can see the different class of the job say in our case let's say we select c class job status by default is scheduled status unless it is released and executable target server is we have just one server so we can select this as the target server okay then start condition okay before that we need to specify the step basically what we want this job to do okay so in this job say for example i want to uh run this program called sm50 okay with no variant and i'll just save it okay so basically it is the name of the sap program we need to give so let's give the program name let's okay so we are trying to search a program name with this particular filter okay so let's select one of the program say for example uh 
flush this particular q okay or realign or so basically generate update functions okay variant we'll see whether is there any variant for this program no i'll just save this okay now this has been saved okay now i'll go and edit okay so this is being saved i'll go back and define the start condition for this job it could be a immediate start just save it or we can define this start at a particular time or after the particular date or we can define after the particular job is finished probably we can define after the event is is triggered okay so we can pick up the from the existing event okay so whenever any so this event is triggered we'll just save it and so basically we have defined the start condition for this job and now if we go and look for this job on sm37 here we can s we want to see the scheduled jobs so that we'll see whether this is being shown up or not okay the job is not saved so basically we have to save that particular job okay so let's go back and see our job okay so what we had done is we had selected a program which which will be running okay so this is the program i'll just save it okay i'll just go back start condition okay say i want to run it immediately just execute it and if i save it okay here you can see the job has been saved with the status as released okay i can go to sm37 to see what happened to that job okay here you can see the different statuses of the job okay our program job name was starting with test so let's see you can see this job is finished okay if you click on this job okay here you can see if i go back these are the different filters that is there we can filter it okay if i just click on this this is showing that what happened to the job okay there is no spool defined if i go to the job log it is showing what happened to that particular job started executed finished okay so that's what actually i wanted to cover in this particular section uh thanks for joining and have a nice day bye bye